Brother Floyd. So who doing it? Good evening. How many of you are glad to be here today? How many of you know that the Lord rose you today? That you're not here by mistake? That it's a blessing to be here? 
I want you to give the God, the God Almighty a hallelujah praise. Not me, but give God a hallelujah praise for what he's done in your lives, for what he's done for you, for what he's allowed you to go through. He's too good. He's too worthy for us not to praise him. I done popped up a button, so I, 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 I'm glad to be here. To the 159th session of the Old Georgia Conference Lay Organization, to Brother McKeety, the Connectional Lay Organization President, to Sister Alfreda Brooks, the SED Lay Organization President, to Teresa Hopkins, the Old Georgia Conference Lay President, to Sister Rosie Seibert, the Director of Lay Activities, to Reverend Dr. Bernard Clark, the host pastor, to Presiding Elder J.S. Hayko, Savannah North District, host Presiding Elder, to Presiding Elder Catherine Mathis, Savannah South District, to Presiding Elder Billy G. McFadden, Savannah Central District, to Sister Chrissy Davis Jackson, Esquire, Episcopal Supervisor, and to Bishop Reginald T. Jackson, Presiding Prelay. The protocol has been established. We will have our prelude and the doxology. Mm -hmm. So would everyone stand? the call to worship the litany by brother Roy Jackson St. Luke AME Church brother Jackson give him a hand as he come y'all <clears throat> we serve a church which spans 39 countries, five continents, speaks countless languages, resides in places governed by democracy, autocracy, and monarchy amid plethora of churches and yet believe in the same God. Restore political interest, pandemic. We have been kept together through the innovation of technology, the willingness to transform to different ways of thinking, worshiping, and witnessing by the grace of that same God. Living a global witness ministry that transforms is real life ministry reflective, a personal relationship with God. It is a complete renewal, a uh, shift of one's mindset, belief, an entire way of being and behaving. Oh, Lord, by the renewal of our minds and hearts, so that we may prove whatever good Living a global witness ministry that transcends, goes beyond borders and boundaries. It is the charge and chance 
for us to extend ourselves beyond our comfort zone to communicate and create avenues that will span generations, open minds, activate people to engage in an edifying work. Oh, Lord, Lord, our prayer. This is cute and transformation. A global witness ministry that liberates, frees one to be liberal in praise, service, and witness. In essence, it untethers us from dull transitions that bind our imagination, creativity, and innovation, and conversely, loosen our productivity, proclivity for boundless greatness. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We yearn for a liberation gospel spread across the world so that all humanity come to know and exemplify living a global witness ministry that transforms, transcends, and liberates. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Jackson. We remain standing. We will have the lay hymn. the invocation by brother Christopher Floyd, the first vice president of the 6th Episcopal District. Brother Floyd. Let us pray. Father God, in the matchless name of Jesus, we come this evening just to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for everything you have done for our direct benefit. You've been extremely kind.
kind to your children. Now, Lord, we ask that you would hold a bishop in the hall of your hands. You would take care of his entire household. Then, Lord, take care of mankind all over the universe. There are many sick and shed in in our Zion. We ask that you would take care of their needs as well. Then, Lord, for the man that will fill John's shoes tonight, we ask that you would speak to him and speak through him, that he be able to convey the message that we all need to hear. Then, Lord, please, sir, help us to come into compliance with your will and to your mandate. We need thee every hour. We need thee every millisecond of the day. Be so kind, hold our hands while we attempt to run this race, that our running will never, ever be in vain. Now, Lord, we pray for the shepherd that you planted in Monumental's vineyard. Please say, my father, take care of his knees and his entire household. Then, Lord, don't forget about all of parishioners in our Zion. You know them by name, our Father. We ask that you would take care of the knees, take care of their children's knees, take care of all that belongs to them. Then, Lord, we pray for Paul. We pray for Kim. Then we pray for all of them. And be so kind, my Father, help us to do and say those things that's pleasing in your sight. For we need thee every hour, we need thee every millisecond of the day. If you be so kind, hold our hands while we attempt to run this race. For we don't desire our running to be in vain. Then, Lord, when praying days is over, and we can't pray no more on this side, please, sir, find us all a home somewhere in the kingdom. With Dr. Job declared that the wicked shall cease from troubling and our weary souls should be at rest. These and all of the blessings we ask in the matchless name of Jesus and all of God's children shouted, Amen.
Chapel. Following that, we will have the welcome and occasion by Sister Zel Zelpha Smith, Townsley Chapel, AME. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I greet you in the joy of Jesus this afternoon. The scripture will be coming from Luke fourth chapter, beginning at the 18th verse. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to, cap to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Yea, will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in the Capernaum, do also hear in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias the prophet, and none of them were cleansed, save, saving Nanum the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. Thank you. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. What a mighty God we serve. I am here to do the occasion and the welcome. However, we're going to do it a little bit different. So on tonight, we call this service Lay Witness. But before we go further into this occasion and welcome, let us do some show and tell. Sister Alfreda Brooks, come stand with the bishop. Sister Teresa Hopkins is already standing with Pastor Holloman. Sister Brenda Young, come stand with Reverend John Moss. Brother Raymond Turner, presiding elder Catherine Mathis. Please stand, Brother Turner. Brother Kenny Murchison, please come stand with brother, with Presiding Elder Billy McFadden. Sister Carmen Harvey. Hurry up, Sister Brother Murchison. S Sister Carmen Harvey, Presiding Elder J. Hako. Sister Rosie Seibert, the Reverend Gregory Laudam. Sister Phyllis Nellums, 
Reverend Douglas and Lucretia Stenson. Brother Lester Foster, come stand with your dad. Sister Carolyn Collins, Reverend Bernard Clark, please come stand. Already there. And Brother Wendell Stevenson, the Reverend Debbie, Debbie Cheney, come stand with us. If you look around, folks, this is what laity and clergy ought to look like. Some people may view ministry as solely the role of ordained individuals, but laity, there are many opportunities to minister outside of the clergy. I'm standing with my pastor, Reverend Charles Dumas. Lay people can and do perform many leadership and management functions for the church. The clergy is comprised of any individual who is placed in an, an official ministry position within the church, that is the pastor. Three things. Communication is very important. It's an important tool between the clergy and the laity. Laity, you must learn to listen to the pastor, but pastors, it's very important that you learn to listen to the laity. Remember, we're focusing on lay witness. Relationships are a critical part. I need you, and you need me. Amen. We're all a part of God's family. Amen. Isn't that what Hezekiah Walker said yes. in his song? Yes. And support. Without you, pastor, and without me, the church suffers. It suffers growth, and it suffers financially. Pastor John, wherever he is, young yesterday said, we got to go from good to great, onward to greatness. And last week, I think I heard Brother Michael Brown said, nothing in, nothing out. As Christians, we are called to serve Christ and to bring the good news to others. We can do it together. For, for those who of you who are visiting here with us tonight, we want to welcome you. So let's remember that it takes all of us to do kingdom building. May God bless you. And thank you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us, and we are in this together. Because we all came from one, one God, and we all breathe the breath of Jesus. Next, we will have the memorial tribute. So Sister Phyllis Nims, the Director of Lay Activity for the Savannah South District, please come. Sister Gloria, I mean, Glenira Martin from the Savannah Central District, Director of Lay Activities. And of course, Sister Carolyn Collins, <laughs> Savannah North. I'm not, the, I'm, I'm, I'm not the dolo, let me make sure that's, that's um, correct. <laughs> Good afternoon, people of God. Life is but a stopping place, a pause in what's to be, a resting place along the road to sweet eternity. We all have different journeys, different paths along the way. 
We all were meant to learn some things, but never meant to stay. Our destination is a place for greater than we know. For some, the journey is quicker. For some, the journey is slow. And when the journey finally ends, we'll claim a great reward and find an everlasting peace together with the Lord, Arthur Unknown. We pause at this time in humble submission to the will of God, gone but not forgotten. Let not your heart be troubled, ye believed in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. John 14, chapter 1 to the third verse. Family members, if present, and church family may stand at this time as I call their loved one's name from Savannah South. St. Paul AME Church, Vidalia. Reverend Ronald Miller, pastor. Sister Willie May Mobley. Sister Nicola Wolfman. Brother J.C. Palmer. Townsley Chapel AME Church, Savannah. Reverend Charles Dumas, pastor. Sister Sula Hall. Sister Betty C. Robbins. Bethel AME Church, Hinesville. Reverend Debbie Deborah Cheney, pastor. Brother Henry Baker. Sister Janice Williams. Pleasant Grove AME Church, Hinesville, Georgia. Reverend Johnny Morse, Jr., pastor. Sister Lula Pearl Nelson. Sister Effie Diane S. Thomas. Brother Joseph Tarbert. Thank you. May God bless you. Remind us, we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind footprints in the sands of time. The brothers and sisters of Savannah Central District left their footprints in the sands of time. They provided a great service for the lay organization. And we are indeed pleased that they were with us and we'll never forget them and the service that they rendered. It is today that we identify those persons. And I'm going to ask a family member, the minister, or other friends of those persons to stand at this time. Greater Gaines, AME. Sister Josephine Page. Brother Lorenzo Haynes, Hayes. Greater Bethel, AME. Sylvania, Georgia. Lorene Burns. St. James A.M.E., Riceboro, Georgia. Sister Ashley West. Taylor Chapel A.M.E. Church, Savannah, Georgia. Brother Michael Pinckney. Sister Dorothy Vincent. 
Mount Zion AME Church, the Mighty Z in Statesboro, Georgia. Brother Luther Trimble, Sister Janie Trimble, Brother Artemis Wilkins, and Sister Jeanette Clifton. Bethel A.M.E. Collins, Brother Daniel Forbes. Let's give God the thanks and the praise. Thank you. Evening, church. Though loss is great, this should not be a time of sadness because they're in a better place than we are right now. Mm. It's time for us to get ourselves right because they're okay now. They're okay. And may the works that they've done speak for them. May the life that they live speak for them. May the service that they gave speak for them. Trinity Fountain AME Church, where Reverend Ollie Robertson is the pastor. If she's here, please stand. Sister Mildred McCray in the family, if they're here. Tonell Campbell, O.C. McCray. Next church is New Bethel Rinkin. The pastor, please stand. That would be Willie Wynn. Brother Moses Taylor. Next church is Thebes AME, Reverend Dr. Prater. Brother Carol Simmons. Thank you. And be blessed. Sometimes you have to be that ram in the bush. I guess God telling me I need some exercise, some cardio. Next, we will have a selection by this wonderful choir. Give them a hand, and following that, we'll have the financial appeal by Reverend Dr. C.J. Holloman from St. Philip AME. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Give God the praises, if you will. Come on, give God the praises one more time. Come on, you can put your hands together with us. It's all right to praise him on late night. Yeah. 
the finance committee is coming. Come on. The labor organization is asking for a $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25, $25,
Hallelujah. Has everyone had opportunity to sow a seed on tonight? Hallelujah. All things come of thee. the praises goes to our God because he's worthy to be praised and when he's praising I don't want him to pass me by I don't know about y'all but I don't want him to pass me by <laughs> moving right along we'll have the introduction of the speaker by presiding elder Billy G McFadden of the Savannah Central District to our worship leader, who is doing a wonderful job <laughs> leading us in worship. Uh, to Bishop Jackson, who extends this wonderful opportunity for me as the presiding elder of the Savannah Central District to introduce one of the preachers who serves uh, on the Savannah Central District. Uh, there are some words that would, that could be used rather in describing uh, this gentleman. Uh, I think of the term gentle giant because he presents as a giant of a man. Um, but then there's words like kindness and benevolent. He's just that kind of gentleman. When I arrived, uh, Tammy and I here in the Savannah uh, Conference, the Old Georgia Conference, he would always extend to me this invitation to go fishing. Uh, he's an avid sports person. I mean, he, he fishes, and then recently I learned that he hunts. I mean, he shoots that rifle. Um, but he extended this wonderful opportunity to go fishing, and um, I took him up on it. And on that particular day, he took myself and, and the Reverend Lester Foster. We got on his pontoon boat, and off we went, Brother Jonathan, out into the lake. And uh, it was my introduction, past, uh, Dr. Foster, into bass fishing because he fishes for bass. And I'd never done that. And uh, Reverend Lester Foster would throw his line out and wouldn't catch nothing. I, I'm not going to tell it all because I'm not one of them tell it all kind of people. But Lester Foster would throw his line out. He threw it so far one time it went across a tree twig. <laughs> and he was getting discouraged. Pastor Layden, he was getting discouraged because when I would throw mine out, a bass would hit it. And the preacher tonight would look over at, at Reverend Foster and say, Doc, you're going to get one. You're going to get one. <laughs> sure enough, uh, Reverend Foster soon got one. And he, it must have, he thought it was big, but when he pulled it in. Of course you know the rest of the story. When I pull mine in. <laughs> the 
this preacher tonight, I mean, it's one thing to stand behind the pulpit, and he can do that. It's one thing to uh, engage in ministry in the local church setting, and he can do that. But it's something entirely different when you have this capacity inside of yourself that can do, as Bishop Jackson preached at last year's annual conference, connect with people. And he's real good at connecting with people. In fact, he's so good. My grandbaby, I took her to church with me one Sunday at his church. Sheree, you'll remember. And uh, the pastor said, whoever knows the 23rd Psalm next Sunday, $50. And he was serious. And my grandbaby was like, Papa, I'm going with you next Sunday. Well, unfortunately, we couldn't make it back to Taylor Chapel that next Sunday. But when we did make it back, we got the report that some of the children that came back and was able to do it, he was prepared to put them $50 in their hand. That's connecting with people. And God calls us to do just that. This preacher that stands before your presence tonight to declare the unadulterated gospel, to preach with power. I've seen him preached until he's sweating. But he's, he, the, the preacher that comes to stand before you tonight is a true man of God who has a lovely wife who's sitting right out here. Give her a hand, Sister Jeray. Not only is she beautiful like that, but she cooks a mighty good meal. <laughs> Beloved, I would invite you tonight to sit inside of your tent doors and have a prepared heart and a ready ear to hear what this preacher will bring to us tonight. And in the fashion of our dear Bishop, Reginald Thomas Jackson, wave your hands this way and say, preach, 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 say it like you mean it, preach, 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 after the next song, the next voice you'll hear will be that of our preacher tonight, the very fine, efficient, effective, pastor of Taylor Chapel, African Methodist Episcopal Church, 214 Darling Street, the Reverend Abe, huh? 105, 105 Darling Street. I, I, I was thinking about 214 Railroad Street in Sylvania, but he'll be the voice that you'll hear tonight, the Reverend Leonard Daniels. Hear him and be blessed. by the 6th Episcopal District Lay President, Sister Alfreda Brooks. Give her a hand. Pastor is the Reverend Vandy Simmons. Bishop, don't get any ideas about making him presiding elder. They ain't ready for that just yet. And it's a joy to not have to officiate anything right now. So we are having lay witness night. Is that not correct? And so I've been selected, I was told, to give the sermonic song. 
We don't use that word anymore. We just say we're going to have a selection. But the sermonic selection is to get you prepared for the word. So in witnessing, I have to give you a reason why I chose this song. 18 months I've gone through illness and sickness with my husband and recently he had a setback and I was contemplating and I was praying and a friend of mine called me from my home of Rochester, New York. She says, you know, Frida, you're looking at this the wrong way. You're looking at it because you're taking care of him, but you need to look at it as God has chosen you because you're the strong person. You're the one that God trusts to do his will. So when I turned around and, and thought about what she said, I said, you know, Arlene, you're right. It's not that it's a burden, it's a privilege that God has given me this opportunity to show others what he can do. So I pondered, I have a garden and my flowers were coming up, the tulips, the daffodils, things I don't remember that I put in this garden are coming up now. And I'm at odd, I'm at odd of what God can do because when he came home this time, he could not walk. But today, he walked from the bed to the living room. We have an awesome God. And when I look at the rain that came down yesterday, it watered something that somebody needed watering. It gave somebody an opportunity to get funds because we had to buy umbrellas. Everything is not for the bad. Some things are for the good. So this song is, was written in the 1800s by a Swedish man. And then it was translated into German. Then it was translated into English. If you open your, uh, your hymnal, it'll show you the English version. But this song came a long ways and was based on the experience of another person. So I want you to get ready to receive the word. And I want you to get ready to receive the words to this song. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder
one is this when Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall buy then I shall bow, then I shall bow in humble adoration and proclaim, my God, how great. they want to be Lord. How great the art. All we got to do is ask. All we got to do is trust. How great, how great the art. have to stop praising because the song has stopped. Come on, is there any praise? Come on, come on, no, no. I said, is there any praise? Because the song said, how great. How many know that you wouldn't be here if he was not great? How, how, how great? <laughs> Brought us from yesterday to today. How great, woke up this morning and uh, still close in a reasonable portion of right mind. How great, every breath I take uh, allows me to be alive uh, just for a little while longer that I might give him praise. Uh, how great, how 
great. There's not words that can describe how great. But if I had to say one thing, I'll just say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for another day's journey. How great. How great, how great. Before I say another word, let me thank you, God. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for turning my life around. Thank you for putting me on a new road. Because the road I was on was taking me straight to hell. But one day, you spoke and I heard you. And I declare I've never been the same. So, Father, right now, take fear, turn it into fire, take anxiety, turn it into anointing, take my voice, use it for your glory, take everything I have, matter of fact, all to Jesus, I surrender all to him, I freely give. For this preaching moment that was 30 years in the making. Thank you, God. Father, speak. Your servant has been listening. Speak to both preacher and people and pews speak God that somebody might rethink how we're living and how we're serving it's in Jesus name I pray amen I shall thank y'all so much for Establishing protocol. I had written it down. There's a whole sheet of y'all who like to hear y'all name called. And if you don't do it right, you get attitudes. But thank you, Sister Colin. Give God some praise for Sister Colin. For leading us in worship. Let me thank my bishop, our bishop, for hearing a name and considered the person behind the name worthy enough to stand here tonight. Thank you, Bishop. <clears throat> to his lovely wife who, if she could, would be here. And I think while we're in this session of the 159th annual conference of the old Georgia, there needs to be a prayer visual in a room while we're here praying and lifting her name. Uh, uh, some go in at one hour and some go in at another hour, but, but her name should be took, taken before the Lord every day while this conference is in session, that when it's over, 
so may be her illness. Amen. The power of prayer. Let me thank a few other folks. My presiding elder for <laughs> that introduction. And Bishop, I got to set some of the records straight. Uh, he, he did pretty good on his first time out. But Foster really wasn't doing that bad, <laughs> as he said. But I'll let him tell the story his way. <laughs> but thank you, Elder McFadden, because I do realize for the bishop to have heard my name, it had to have come from somewhere else. And so I thank you for whoever thought that I might be able to say something on behalf of the Lord to this late night. To my president of the lay organization, president of the lay organization for the Santa Central District, Brother Kenny Murchison, give God some praise for him. He's like a handprint. There ain't but one like him. And when you get to know him, you'll love him. Amen? To what I believe is one of the best congregations this side of heaven. The Taylor Chapel family who are here. Would you please stand? Let me, let me, let me see you. Let me see you. Let me see you. Oh Lord, look at that, y'all. Look, look at that. 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 Come on, come on. Give them some praise. They put up with me week after week. And now for the last three years. I love y'all. And never last in my life, but last to be spoken of before I preach. I've been blessed for almost 36 years now to have met this woman who had enough nerves to think she wanted to marry me. gave me an ultimatum and she won give God some praise for Sister Sheree for whatever you think you see in me it could never have been without her amen Now, if I forgot to call your name, call it yourself. <laughs> if you just had to hear it, call it yourself. Now, I'm smart enough to know, don't be here all night. For a wise man once said, that in the scripture, Jesus said to one of his disciples, what you can really do, do it quickly. <laughs> so for those who were looking for a fairly short sermon, you got it. <laughs> Let us do what we've been assigned to do. If you had your Bibles, I would ask you to turn with me to two different passages of scriptures. They're not too long. I would ask you to turn with me to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse, through the fifth verse, and just the twelfth verse. And then I would ask you to journey with me to, to the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. From the NIV version, hear now, hear, hear, hear closely, hear closely the word of the Lord. 
found in Mark's Gospel, chapter 2. It says, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such a large number that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Somebody say he preached. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowering the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, somebody said their faith, their faith. he said to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. Verse 12 says, he got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. I wish I could state my case tonight by itself, but it won't. The book of Acts, third chapter, first verse reads like this. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. At three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day, somebody say every day, to beg from those going into the temple court. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Somebody says there's people waiting and expecting to get something. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do, I give you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by his right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man, feet and ankles, became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple court, walking and jumping and praising God. That was something for somebody to shout about right there. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the man who used to sit. Somebody said used to. Sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonders and amazement at what had happened to him. I'd like to share with you tonight, just for a little while, collaborating to create used to be's. Collaborating to create used to be's. I want to be absolutely clear you understand what I'm saying. Collaborating means to work together with someone to produce or create something. Used to be means having previously been or no longer the same. 
you're there. Let's get through this. My brothers and my sisters, fellow lay and pastors and bishops, from the beginning of time, God has used collaboration to get things done. How do you see that, Daniel? So, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, states it plainly. He said, let us. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And from there, he stepped a little farther. He said, and he made male and female and told them to be fruitful and multiply. Yes, he did. Yes, 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 yes. Our God has, has been using collaboration to meet the needs that he needed accomplished in the world so that he can get things done. And it just blew my mind the night when, uh, when you put the preachers and the people together. Because it takes two, baby, to make a dream come true. Yeah, it takes two. It, it takes uh, collaboration uh, uh, to do this thing. And, and God uh, uh, uses collaboration. And to be truthful about it, he, he's no respecter of person of who he will use in his collaboration. Just let me be plain. He used AMEs and CMEs. <laughs> he used Baptists. <laughs> and Methodist. <laughs> he used black <laughs> and white. <laughs> he uses Democrats <laughs> and Republicans. <laughs> he uses the government <laughs> and the church. <laughs> he uses pastors <laughs> and lay. <laughs> and yes, he even used supernatural to deal with the natural. Our God is an expert on collaboration. <laughs> but, but, but for my assignment tonight, I can't focus on all of them because this is a lay witness service. Let me focus on pastors and the lay of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that, that, tonight, that's my assignment then. And I'm glad you're present. He says, for if we want to create used to be's, we got to work together, y'all. We, 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 we got to do it together. But can I just be real? How many of us know that we can be in the same church with two different agendas. Can I just be real though? We're just two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And our goal should be the same. If we're going to create used to be, if we're going to make disciples uh, 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 for Christ, uh, uh, both collectively and separately, uh, we got to find a way to work together. Uh, it's going to require some collaboration. If we want to build back better and stronger, this church of Richard Allen, but especially this church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must, somebody say we must. We must take Matthew 28, 19 and 20 as a mandate or a command and not an option. Because guess what? If we don't plan to save, we're planning to fail. Yeah. Hear me now. We 
must understand that, that, the, that, that, that the mandate of God upon his way back to heaven was that we needed to go into all the world, into a whole nation, uh, uh, teaching them what thus saith the Lord, uh, and, and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and he said, uh, Lo, I'm with you to the end of the ages. So what do we got to lose? If we work the thing together, what we can be assured of according to God's word is, is that where there's two or three gathered in his name, he said, I'll be in the midst of. So let me go on talk to these two groups tonight and get out of here. Hope that no nobody key my car. I'll go toilet paper Taylor Chapel. First, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me press my case to the preachers. Will you allow me a little grace though? I, I know they teach y'all in the school of theology is that you ought to stick with one text, but uh, the story I need to tell tonight requires two. So give me a little grace. First, to the pastors. All the work for the Lord Jesus is not in the four walls of the church. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. CNN says, since you don't want to listen to me, all the work that as pastors that needs to be done isn't always in the four walls. Come with me. In Acts chapter 3, it said that Peter and John was on their way the church at three in the afternoon when they encountered a man on the outside of the church. Let me, let me, let me say that again. They were on their way to church and they encountered a man on the outside of the church who had been put there from birth to beg from those who went in. Beg me to ask, how many of us pastors drive through the neighborhoods in and around the churches we pastor? Or do you stick your car on automatic GPS and there's one way in, and there's one way out. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I would beg to ask, uh, when, 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 when was the last time you took a side street to see what else was in and around the neighborhood of the place you have been given uh, to minister to? What, 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 what's, 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 what, what's down Fair Street? What's down King Street? What's down Orford Street? What's down Louisville Road? In and around Taylor. I can tell you because I've driven down those streets. Matter of fact, the folks on, on uh, Darling Street wanna, why he keep riding up and down this street? Because I want to be sure that the street that Taylor is on is in the best condition possible because it's the place where I go to worship. And I believe the place where I go to worship uh, needs to look as good as it can. Uh, uh, that's why every now and then, uh, me and the boys will get together and walk the streets of Darling and pick up the trash that folks are so in a habit of throwing to the girl. Let me, get, let me get back in here. 
The Bible says we ought to love our neighbor as ourselves. But pastors, how can we love folks that we don't even know? We never met. We never made an effort to go and see who was our neighbor. Let me tell you how important it is to, to know your neighbor. When I was pastoring at Flipper, I met the neighbor. He was kind of nosy, but I met him. But guess what? When he saw something going wrong at Flipper, that brother gave me a call. See, he could not call me if I not had made friends with him and let him know that I appreciate him being our neighbor. And brother, while you're looking out for us, if you see anything going on, here's my number. I'm going to be through. I ain't going to take too long. Can I just be real, Pastor? We need to be seen more at the church than on Sunday mornings. Oh, yeah. This is some of our regiment. You get up. You get dressed. You go to church. You might there get in time for Sunday school. When Sunday school is over, you have worship. Get in your car. Get back in your car, go home. They don't see you, they don't hear from you until the next Sunday when you come in and do the same thing that you did last week. Our bishop said we need to connect the folks. Uh, you can't connect the folks if you ain't around folks. Can I be real? And, uh, and this ain't on the paper, so Lord, thank you. Some of us done made it to the harvest field but we done took our hands off the plow. And let me tell you, if you don't plant nothing, you can't grow nothing. Amen? My question to you, pastors, uh, uh, can they see you more than Sunday morning? Uh, can they see you at the community meeting? Can they see you at the kitty council meeting? Can you see when the, when, when the neighborhood's got to clean up? Are you showing up? Are you there? Are you maybe bringing them some water? What, what are you doing to let them know that you appreciate the fact that they're your neighbors? I recently went to a community meeting and it was amazing that the same things I was concerned with, the community was concerned with. And I don't know whether I was the only pastor there or not, but there's one thing I do know. I've decided that being at the community meeting is a little more important than always having Bible study at six o'clock. So guess what? On Wednesday night, the second two Wednesday of the month, I'm going to the community meeting and Bible study will start from seven to eight or go to another night. We must show up in the places where God is giving us to minister. I'm almost through with us. And if the truth be told, sometimes we need to get our hands dirty. Some of us got too well of manicured hands. For in the Acts scripture, it said that Peter and John looked at him and then they picked him up. Can I just be real? If you're lame, which means you can't walk, which means then you're moving on your hands. I don't think the brother's hands was clean. But he was a child of God. And they knew God. And on their way to church, they chose to stop look and listen 
and reached down and picked the brother up. Can I be real? <laughs> Our lay folks need to see us working so that they'll know that we will put our shoulders to the plow just like them. They, they, they need to see us in the soup kitchens uh, and the shelters uh, uh, and the like. They, they need to know that we are willing to go out into the hedges and the highways just like we're asking them to go out into the hedges and the highway and bring to God those that need to be saved. Yeah. Yeah. Can I be real? How can you lead people where you're not willing to go? I told Taylor that a year ago, if we were doing the same thing last year that we were doing this year, then I really didn't have a reason to be there. Thank you, Taylor, for giving me a reason to be there. My Women's Missionary Society decided to adopt a shelter. And once a month, we, the pastor, yeah. the Women's Missionary Society, and the Sons of Allen, yeah. fix at least 70 to 80 sandwiches and enough soup to feed that many folks. And guess what? Then we deliver it to where the folks need to get it. Uh, we're not saying always come to us. Uh, Sometimes we've got to go where the people are. I, 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 ain't got, I, I, I gotta get out of here cause some of y'all looking at your watch. I'm reminded in the scriptures of the story of the Good Samaritan. And let me paraphrase and abbreviate it my way. It said the gist of this that there was a brother on the road to Jericho. And somebody gave him a beat down. And then it said, shortly after or whatever time later, the priest came by. And he, he looked. Yeah, 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 he beat up pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, he bleeding. But I got to get to the church because there's a meeting going on and I can't be late. Okay, that wasn't enough. Jesus said, then a Levite, the steward, so the associate minister came by. Yeah, they too looked. So yeah, he bleeding. <laughs> he looked half dead. But I got to get to where the priest is because we got a meeting going on. <laughs> and left the man on the side of the road. Can I be real? How many of us today on your way to this meeting thought that it ought to be good to bring somebody who needs to have a relationship with Jesus. No, 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 you were too ready. You y'all 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 getting too ready in your blue. And you're black. And we are forgetting the people on the side of the road of life that needs to be in this worship service. I know you got your stuff together, but every now and then you're gonna have to reach down and pick some folks up and bring them with you. Well, I got to get on out of here, Bishop. I, I, I know you're tired. But like I said, Peter and John, they stopped, looked, listened, and did something. And can I just be real? I know most of y'all pastors cry broke, but you ain't broke. 
But on that day, Peter and John said, look at us, silver and gold, have I none? But that that I have, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, uh, get up and walk. Uh, what I'm just want to stop by to tell us, pastors, is that we've got some authority uh, and anointing uh, in the name and the power of Jesus that when we're out of money, uh, Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. Look at your buddy over there and say, Jesus, Jesus is enough. I'm going to get on out of here now. I'm going, let, me go, let me go on to the lay. I, I know y'all going to hate me when this is over. Now to the lay. Statistics say that from 1992 to 2022, that the unchurched has increased to be about 53% of the population in the United States of America. Now, I don't remember what the census really said, but I believe it was some 300 million folks living in these continental United States. Can I be real? Y'all just say it with me, the harvest is really plentiful. No, no, say it, say it. The harvest is really plentiful. Yeah, yeah, see, 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 see the problem is, is that we don't believe that there are folks out there that needs to be in the church where we are. How, 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 how do you say that, Reverend? With some authority. Taylor, I'm putting y'all on blast. When the pastor had more visitors coming to the church than the membership. Uh, and that's enough said about that. But, but, but let, me, let, me, let me put it in much different language. If Taylor could increase our membership by six people per year over the next two years, can I be real? That would increase our active membership by 50%. And if it would increase our membership by 50%, Imagine what that would do with our finances if those same 12 people brought at least $1,000 a year with them. That would increase our finances. I, I wrote it down. To some 12 to 15%. We ain't having to sell no chicken dinners now for the budget. But imagine what we really could do in the changing of lives of the least of God's people. Uh, if, if all we did was go out and bring in the 12 people over the next two years, we would change the director, the, the directory of our church. And we can stop talking about that taboo called budget. that word. It costs something to be with Jesus. I, I, I remember some time back I saw a poster with the picture of Malcolm X on it. And he was holding an AK-47. In one hand he was peeping out the window with the other. And the large caption at the bottom said, by any means necessary. Can I be real? Yeah. Lay folks? Matthew 28, 19 and 20, 
was not just to the apostles or the preachers or the pastors. That was a general mandate to believe us. But can I just be real? Over my 26 years of pastoring, for some reason, the mind of the lay still believes that only person that's supposed to go out and do evangelism uh, uh, to the lost uh, is the pastors. Because of that, I come by to correct your thinking. That was done to all the believers. By any means necessary. I'm almost finished, Bishop. I'm, I'm on page six of page eight. <laughs> to the lay. To the lay. Well, no, it's, it's big print. I hand wrote it. I double spaced it. To the lay, your footprint in the world is about 10 to 15 times bigger than the pastors. Yeah. 10 to 15 percent bigger, or 10 times to 15 times bigger than the pastor. For he's only one person. But there are many lay. Hmm. If a new focus on discipleship, soul winning, and not how to raise the budget becomes the new focus of the lay. The Amy Church would set records on the amount of folks being brought to Christ. Can I just be real? <laughs> I get so tired of all these darn fundraisers getting money out of the same people in the same church where you are. I come to your church. You come to my church. I got an anniversary. You come to my anniversary. Can I just be real? There are 50, 150 million folks on church leading a place to worship. Why don't we go pick some of them up? I'm getting there, Bishop. I'm getting there. In order for that to happen, it's going to require collaboration. Not just with the pastor and the organized lay, but the lay, the missionary, the YPD, the RAAC, the DMC, and all the other C's we might have. If, in fact, we're going to grow this church of Allen and of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are, your agendas need to be the same, but dealing with our different set of subsets. Like the four men over in Mark's gospel. One of them saw their friend in need. I can tell the story my way because it doesn't say any different. One of them saw their friend that was in need, but realized that he was too heavy to get to Jesus all by himself. So they collaborated with a few other friends. Let me make it plain. The lay saw a family on the side of the road that needed help. But it realized with its limited resources and its limited power that they couldn't do everything that they needed to do for the family. So then they called the Women's Missionary Society and said, there's a family on the side of the road huh? and they just a little bit too heavy lift for my organization. Huh? Can you work out with me? Huh? And they said, yes, we will. Huh? And when they showed up, huh, they found out huh, that this family huh, got more stuff going on in it huh, than even the lay. Huh? 
and the missionaries can do. So then they said, let's call the sons of Allen because they are powerful, they are strong, and they are mighty. And I believe we can get this family into a whole situation together. But when they showed up, they realized that they needed some children to talk to the children. And so when the lady and the Women's Missionary Society and the Sons of Allen and the YPD got together together they were stronger than they ever will be apart so they were able to pick up the family and bring them to Jesus and guess what can I look if you don't remember anything else tonight I say don't you try to fix everything that's wrong with the folks you're bringing to Jesus. Because according to the scripture I read, it said that when they got to the door, it was full with some other folks who wanted to get their family to Jesus. But they were so determined uh, to get this family to Jesus uh, that they said, uh, I believe there's another way. Uh, and that's the beauty of collaboration. Uh, when your limited one-way thinking uh, won't allow you to accomplish what you need, uh, you need to get some more heads involved because two heads uh, is still better than one, especially when it's not on the same body. So they said, Let's, let's go up the stair. If we get him up there, guess what? We can get him to Jesus. See, sometimes there are going to be blockers in your way trying to get folks who are unchurched or who need a healing to Jesus. But, 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 but look, let me get you there. Let me get you there, and then we'll get them out of the way. It's sad that they dug a hole through the roof and lowered the man that the mat was on. Get this, lady. Get this. Get this. He said, Jesus, said because of their faith, your sin are forgiven. What you don't need to worry about is the sin. You just need to get them to Jesus. Let the preaching of the word of God deal with their sin. Let a preacher who spent some time with Jesus, who's preaching the word, do what preaching the word will do. It will deliver you. It will cause healing. Let the preachers do their job and you do your job. You bring them, let God slay them, and lift them to their feet. I'm almost done and I'm out of here. It, it, it said that the house that Jesus was preaching in was full. That there was really no room for him to get through the door. How many of you wish that was your church? Hmm? If, in fact, we want to fill up churches other than funerals and weddings, can I just be real? That's the only time Taylor ever been full since I've been there. You know, maybe under Scott and Prater and Lord, or maybe it was full, I don't know. But when I got there, it wasn't that many full. And it's never been full until we had funerals or had a wedding. It's not so much about filling the church to the max, but it is about adding to the church 
those family members that we swear we love. Oh, Johnny was so good. I love him. Sally was so great. I love him. And we say that when they're lying there in the coffins in front of us. But when they were alive and needed some help, you, you made it your way to church and left them at home or left them down the street to die and to take their own lives because our children needs more supervision. And I don't know about you, but it was good for us to be in the church as a child because if not, we would have gotten ourselves into some major trouble. I come by to tell some of them, we got to get them there by hook or by crook, whatever it takes. We need to get folks to Jesus and stop letting them give excuses. I'm going to get on out of here. I'm through now, Bishop. I'm, 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 as we would say, I feel my help now. And my help says get to the end because the folks ready to go home. Collaboration works. It's a biblical truth. I see it in the Bible. Because I know you don't believe me. But believe God's word. Because it is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. In the Bible, over in Acts chapter 2, at the 42nd through the 47th verse, look at God. It says, and let me please fix this my way. I'm not going to read it verbatim. Amen? Amen? Go back and read it later yourself. It says in the first verse that the believers, somebody say I'm a believer. That the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship. It lets me know then that the preacher and the people was talking. Uh, because you can't fellowship if you ain't talking. It says that, uh, that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Maybe they were listening to us uh, uh, when we were telling them that they need to go out and, and make disciples. They were listening. And then not only that, it said then they, they prayed together. Maybe we need to get some of this ritual out of the way and send some more time in prayer. We can quickly get through the prayer. But we stuck around on the, on, the, on the ritual stuff sometimes too long. Some Sundays you need to throw it all out and just sit there and labor before the Lord. Some time ago they used to call it a tarrying service. Sometime we got to tarry there, amen, so that we can hear from the Lord. And then it goes on to say, he says they were together on one accord. And to be on one accord, you have to be in a collaboration. Uh, because collaboration means two people, uh, amen, on the same goal uh, to do the same thing. Uh, it says that they were together on one accord. Uh, and then it said, oh, God, Jesus. He said they, they enjoyed the favor of all the people. Oh, Lord, Bishop, I sure wish I could stay there a minute longer. It said that they sold property and possessions, uh, not fish dinners uh, and rib dinners. Uh, yeah, y'all can look at me and say all you want. I don't believe in selling them for the works of the Lord, but guess what? Some book uh, still do it. And, 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 and you keep doing it if you think that works. But I'm a believer and I know that tithes and offering works. I'm a living witness of it. I, I believe it. I walk it. I talk it. I live it. He says, they enjoyed the favor of all the people. I got to park there for a minute. I'm sorry. I was in Adairsville. And we were pretty busy in the community doing the work that God was calling us to do. And one day I got a call from a man. And he said, Reverend, yeah, this is brother so-and-so. I said, yeah, how you doing? He says, I need to see you. I said, okay. 
He said, he said, when can you meet me? I said, you tell me when and where. I, I'll be there. And for anybody who knows anything about Marietta, at the exit ramp of Windy Hill Road, there's a Popeye's. Yeah, I love chicken. So we met at the Popeye's, Bishop. Uh, and I went over and I got in his car. And he says, I, I've been seeing the work and I know the work that you're trying to do in Adairsville and, and I want to help. So, okay. So, you know, I was thinking that, yeah, I was going to get a check, $500, and call it a day. Well, he gave me the check, and I'm trying to be humble, Bishop, so I just took the check and put it on the dash, and I said, can I pray? Because you didn't have to do what you're doing. And he says, yeah, you pray, and I'm sitting there with tears in my eyes because, look, you know, look, the church, we needed some money. He says, open it. I said, is that the line? Okay, I'll open it. Well, I opened the check. And I thought I saw $5,000. Wait a minute. That's got a period, three zeros, a comma, a zero and a five? He could not hold back my tears because guess what? We were trying to do a great works for God and, and what we needed was some help. So when I tell you that when we can collaborate together and do the works of God, God will send you what you need to do the work he's calling you to do. It was for $50,000, more than 50% of what our church was collecting in a whole year. I'm telling you, God will let your life be favored if you collaborate in his ministry to do his work. I'm going to get on out of here, bitch. I, I, I know I've been saying it, but I'm going to get on out of here. If that was enough, I get the Savannah, I get a call. Me and my wife sitting on the sofa. He says, hey, Reverend. I said, how you doing? He goes, I got his name on speed dial. <laughs> hey, how you doing? He says, uh, uh, I want to I wanna bless again like I did some years back. I said, really? He said, but I want to spread it this time. He says, I'm going to give you 15, I'm going to give one church 15, I'm going to give another church 15. I said, well, hey, look, this is a new set of stewards. I need to, I need to talk to them to see are they willing to do what you want done because, you know, once they go into the bank, sometimes those stewards believe it's their money and not God's money. <laughs> I ain't saying that about my stewards at Taylor, but I'm just telling you about the experiences I've been hearing over the years. <laughs> So I, I said, what I, then I need you to do is send a letter telling us exactly what you want us to do. My stewards say they will do it. Three days later, a check for $45,000 was in my hand. Can I be real? If you do the work that God has called you to do, he won't take you where he won't bless you to be there and to do the work. The problem is that some of us are showing up to the job and don't want to put our hand on the plow. We don't want to get our feet and our hands dirty. And God's saying to do the work that I've called you to do, sometimes you got to get down in the muck and the mire. And when you get down in the muck and the mire, I can pick you up out of it. I can mold you and shape you into whatever. I need you to be. Bishop, that, that's, that's it. But I got to leave you with my own personal testimony about collaboration. I was at Turner, 
chapel, the second largest church in the, in the state, but not when I got there. And I was paralyzed. I was stuck. on the side of the road of life. I was messed up. I'd gone through divorces. I was paying child support, trying to make a living with a new wife. And I was messed up. But Kenneth E. Marcus, Sunday after Sunday, Preach the word. And when I tell you that the word of God can change your life. He preached the word. But see, that, 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 ain't, that ain't the whole story, y'all. Because he preached the word. Um, but it was a steward by the name of Zanny Miller. Who took the word that he preached and lived it. Uh, and one night... Uh, when the church was having an all-night prayer visual, uh, he invited me to come. And I was messed up. <laughs> My daughter was in a hospital. They didn't know what was wrong with her. And I was in a shambles. Uh, but he said, come on in the church. We're going to be in the church all night, and we're going to be praying and laying hands on folks. Y'all need to know I ain't never been in no church where they were laying hands on. But that Friday night, my pastor was sick with the chicken pox. But we had that prayer visual. And it was just about midnight. And we were at the altar. And we were praying. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in Reverend Moon, I said, your ass for the Holy Ghost. Can I just be real? I know what the heck Holy Ghost was, and that's not what I said. <laughs> he anointed his hands, placed it on my head. The next thing I knew, I was on the floor, looking up at the ceiling. But I was like the woman who made it to Jesus because she had some issues. For when I got up, I knew that there was a change in my life preaching and helping together with the power of God change my life you can't you 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 you, you don't know my story and my telling you my story ain't gonna make me no less of the preacher than I am. See, I was a used to be. I used to sell drugs to supplement my income. I met my dealer at work, and on the weekends, I was selling them nickel bags just as fast as I could roll them out. I used to go to the clubs where some of y'all daughters danced. And I used to try to make it rain. I used to. I used to. I don't think I've ever said this company I worked for for 43 years. In them first two years, I was stealing them brine. I had a crew on the inside, and I had a place on the outside. 
where we'd load whole loads of apartments of furniture in my truck. And I'd take it to the place. And then we'd sell it and spend the money. Can I be real? I used to be. But look at God now. Look at how he delivered me. And because he delivered me, I've been no longer a burden on my family. Matter of fact, I got in the blessing business. Hear me, Lay. There are many more just like me out there in the hedges and the highways of life. But if you don't change your agenda from always trying to figure out how the heck to raise some budget and began to look at the souls God has put in and around your life. Amen. In your barber shop, in your beauty shop, in your sororities, in your fraternities, in your lodges, and the job that we go to. God has put folks around us, and he's been wanting us to bring them to Christ. Sheree, I want you to imagine if I hadn't come to Christ. It would be an atrocity to be your husband. But because Just because he chose to save my life. I'm so proud to be your husband, to be the pastor of Taylor Chapel. Because I'm here to tell you that which folks are throwing away, if we put it in God's hand, God will mold it and he will shape it and he will create more used to be and our church will be the better off for it because I thank God. God rest his soul. Kenneth Marcus, thank you for preaching a word. Zanny Miller, thank you for seeing a brother hurting and inviting him in. And because of that, I've never been the same. Thank you. The doors of the church are open. Just as, just as I am with our one plea. Was that, was that thy blood was, was church for somebody that may not know the Lord Jesus Christ right now as their personal Savior, as the one can change you 
from what you used to be and make you something new. There's an old saying that one man's treasure is another man's treasure. Well, all of us are God's treasure. And so I just want to introduce you to someone that loves us more than anything else. His name is Jesus. Is there one that does not know him? Would you give your life, your heart, mind, body, and soul? Is there one? Well, then if all of us know who he is, will you give God a hand clap of praise? Come on, give him some praise. Come on, give him some praise. Of God, I know, I what a word, what a word. It takes me and you to make the dream come true. A supernatural from a natural. And pastors, Hold to the plow <laughs> and lay, do your part, because Jesus is enough. Now we'll have the installation of the officers, and then we'll have the remarks by Sister Rosie Seibert, the Georgia Conference Lay Director of Activities, Sister Teresa Hopkins, the old Georgia Conference President, Sister Alfreda Book Brooks, the 6th Episcopal District Lay President, and Reverend Bernard Clark, the host pastor, the presiding elder, Reverend Dr. J.S. Hako, host, and then the bishop, Bishop Reginald T. Jackson, presiding prelay, and then the lay benediction. Thank you. It's an obligation that we must install the officers. They had their election two weeks ago, and it is tradition of the old Georgia Conference to have them installed during lay witness night. I will do this in less than five minutes if you all will participate. Members of the old Georgia Conference, it gives me great pleasure to execute the installation of your officers for the 2023-25 year. But before I install your officer, officers, here are a few points I would like to highlight. One, officers, you submitted a letter of intent or your conference president solicited your help to complete the office roster. Nevertheless, your acceptance indicated that you met the requirements, and you wanted to hold your office. Two, you submitted an intent, or by your acceptance, you indicated that you wanted to serve your conference, district, and local lay with your time, talent, and oftentimes your treasure. Three, in the discipline and doctrine of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, it outlines your duties and your responsibilities. If you have not read, those sections, please do so as soon as possible. Understanding these duties will help you and us as we transform, transcend, and liberate our laity. And when we are doing this, we are also reclaiming, recruiting, retaining our membership. I admonish you to work and respect each other. And remember, constituted authority not only belongs with the bishop and his ministries, but with your elected leadership in the laity as well. Do not think, since you have this position, you know everything, because there is always someone smarter than you. Be willing to accept criticism as a learning experience, and while you may get mad for being corrected, don't forget to say thank you. And finally, it is okay to eat humble pie once in a while. As I call your name, would you please come forward? 
President, Sister Anna Teresa Hopkins, First Vice President, Brother John Raymond Turner, Recording Secretary, Sister Judy Williams, Treasurer, Queen Reeves, Financial Secretary, Vera Richmond, Chaplain, Eunice F Floyd, Historiographer, Rosie Siebert, Parliamentarian, Valerie Reynolds Darby, Director of Lay Activity, Doris Fogel Wells, Director of Public Relations, Lester Foster. Second Vice, Brother Wendell Stevenson. A charge to Dearly beloved, we rejoice that you have proposed in your hearts to devote your lives to this task. You are among people who serve, ever testifying within the varied activities of common life to the infinite love of God in Jesus Christ. Such a vocation confers a great privilege. It always lays upon you a solemn responsibility. Will you endeavor as much as lieth within you to perform faithfully the duties of your office in this organization? Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, graciously behold thy servants elected to serve on this district. Endow them with thy spirit enrich them with thy heavenly grace and strengthen them for the task which lie ahead that in all thy works begun, continued and ended in thee, that they may glorify your holy name and advance your blessed kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. I commission you to take charge of the work of your office in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good evening, Old Georgia Conference. First, I would like to thank all of you who came out to help make this service be what it is. And I would especially like to thank all of the program participants for giving of their time and their talent. I'm not speaking to Reverend Daniels, because he just walked all up and down on everybody's toes tonight. 
He walked up and down the clergy, and then he walked up and down the lake. <laughs> the bad part about it is it was the same lesson that I just learned in the class that I took at Turner. I just wrote a paper on that. So I'm here to tell you, he told you the truth. We have to learn to work together. We have to learn to respect each other. Our pastors are here because they're ordained to teach and preach the word. They are the ones who are given the right to perform the sacraments. They always tell us, sheep get sheep. Even when we bring people in though, how welcome do we make them feel? We bring them in and expect them to be teen, I mean, pew warmers. Pew warmers are welcome, but workers are more welcome. Mm -hmm. And they can only be workers if we open up our hearts and our arms to them, all right? We have to give them the opportunity to be a part of our teams. So I, I'm glad that you told them all of that from behind that sacred desk because I tell them that all the time in meeting. I hope they learn from the both of us. Thank you. Uh, now, um, I have officers that were just elected in the districts, and uh, they need to be installed also, Bishop. Uh, let's start with, you know, I like to do things in uh, alphabetical order. That way nobody feels that I'm showing favoritism. Because I tell them I don't have friends. I have Christian brothers and sisters. All right, so Savannah Central is first because C comes first. So with the officers of Savannah Central, starting with the president, Brother Kenny Murchison, please come forward. And all of his officers. You don't have any officers here? Uh, Brother Keel is here. Brother Keel, Sister Richmond is here. Uh, Glenera. Glenera. Come on, Sister Queen. Y'all forgot what district y'all officers in? Nah, we don't want people to think the laity are all dumb bunnies. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> like you know how to behave. It's the house of the Lord. <laughs> all right. I'm not going to go through all of that long. Six Episcopal <laughs> District President. You know I can't talk that much. But I will say this. You've all been elected by your districts. They have faith in you to perform your duties. You know what your duties are. So now would you take the vow that you are willing and you're ready to perform all of your duties for the Savannah Central District Lay Organization. I will. OK. And I'm going to ask your presiding elder to say a word of prayer. Oh, yeah. Let us pray. God, we thank you for these that have committed themselves to doing that which you have called them to do. We pray that you would cover them and that you would instill in them the determination and the faithfulness to carry out that which you've assigned to their hands. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. All right, thank you so very much. Yep, salute them, please. Now, Savannah, um, in is next. Savannah North. Now, these people were actually installed at their meeting but when they heard that Savannah Central and Savannah South were being installed tonight,
they wanted to do it again. <laughs> so the president, the new president, Ms. Harvey, and all of the other officers, please come. Uh, these are the newly elected officers for the Savannah North lay organization. Ms. Carmen, Sister Carmen Harvey is the new president. Uh, Sister Carolyn Collins decided to uh, step down for health reasons. Uh, now, are you ready to um, acknowledge that you are will ready and willing to perform all duties required of you as good Christian leaders in the Savannah no. North lay organization. We do. We do. We are. And your elder is going to pray for you one more time. Because he was at your meeting and prayed for you one time. <laughs> he likes to pray. Let us pray. Bless them now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You. All right, last but not least, Savannah South. Uh, their new, because uh, S is last, yes. Savannah South, their new president is um, Brother Turner. One more officer in the in the back. He's sitting back there, but we are going to um, allow him to raise his hand and wave at us. Uh, you are all have accepted positions. You're all workers. I know you all, so I know you know what you got to do. Are you ready and willing to do all this? required and needed, necessary for the Savannah South um, area, District Lay Organization. And we are going to ask Presiding Elder Mathis to come say a prayer for you. Father, we thank you for choosing these, your people, to carry out the duties that you have assigned to them. Cover them as we pray for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you very much. Let's give them a hand too, please. Now that installation is also going to serve as my remarks. I apologize if you think I should say more, but my lungs just won't do it. Uh, I'm asthmatic pollen season, all kind of things are going on with me. So uh, thank you so very much once again, and God bless you all. So quickly, let me add some things so that I can close this out. Uh, Sister Rosie, come on. This is the outgoing director of lay activity for the old Georgia conference. And I know that your president has an issue with her lungs, but on behalf of her and of this old Georgia conference, we want to thank you for your, your diligence in putting this program together. It, it, it does not seem that it was a lot done, but if those who did get programs can see how much work and love that you put in it, and we want you to know we love you and we appreciate your work. And, and if I could, thank you. If I could add one thing, I didn't put the pro the book the uh, journal together by myself. I did have some help. Um, Stefan, he is our public relations guy, and he and I worked very very diligently together. He got tired of me. We fussed a lot, back and forth, back and forth. But you know, 
that's the way it is, but look what it turned out to be. And I just want to thank everyone who contributed uh, and our donation uh, played a role this evening. I mean, you know, in the, bull in the journal and also all of my program participants, everyone, and we did uh, receive some spiritual food, something to feast upon all and from tonight until next week. And I thank you so much. And it was a pleasure. Uh, it was a journey, eight years. It happened so quickly. But there are some things that I do enjoy doing. I like planning. I love planning. Thank you so much for tolerating me. Before we allow the bishop to speak, I just want to give you some pointers. As many as I've seen here this evening, I anticipate seeing you June 15th in Atlanta, Georgia, as we have our quarterly meeting and our president's luncheon. As many as I see at this time, I am looking forward to see that many in Atlanta. This will be at the tail end of the post planning that the bishop will have, and we're asking you to come out. This will be the last post planning meeting of our bishop. I expect to see all the lovely faces out. In addition to that, we are going to have our state biennial September 21st in Valdosta, Georgia. It will be hosted by the South Conference. And also, on June 15th, the book that you have been waiting for will be ready. That's the book with the journal. That's the book that has all the church histories in it that we have captivated. As I said before, it is a desire to capture all our history because if we do not put it in writing, we're going to lose it. And the way they're taking books out of libraries, we want to make certain that we capture our church history. The deadline for all histories was March 31st. So if you didn't make that deadline, unfortunately, you will not be in this printed publication. But we will have it registered in the Library of Congress so that we will never lose the book. It will always be somewhere where we can find it. Amen. July 2025, July 6th through the 10th, the, uh, the 6th Episcopal District will host the 39th Lay Biennial in Atlanta, Georgia. We hope to see all of you there. We have already started our planning, and we pray that you will be able to come out and see the work of the Connectional Lay Organization. We will have our spring meeting May 16th to the 18th, this coming May 16th to the 18th, the Connectional Lay Spring Executive Board will be in Birmingham, Alabama. Please rise and receive our Bishop, Bishop Reginald Jackson. Thank you, my sisters and my brothers, and while you're standing, you may as well remain, because I'm going to be brief, and we'll have the benediction. Let me thank the lay organization for this late night service. Let me thank Reverend Daniels for allowing God to use you to speak to us, and let me thank all of you who have participated, and I want to emphasize participated in tonight's service. I want to congratulate the officers of the Georgia Conference Lay Organization, particularly your president. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, look good in your blue and white. And to all of the officers, congratulations at the conference and at the presiding elder district level. Let's do the work that God has committed to our care. Tomorrow morning we begin at 9.30 a.m. on our second day of business of the Georgia Conference. Thank you and God bless. Yes, we do have two former presidents here. We're, we're, raise your hands, our emeritus presidents. Yes. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you for the service you've already given, and I'm sure the counsel that you are giving to the current president. Give them another hand. All right. All right, we'll have the benediction. Oh, Pastor Clark, do you have announcements? Yes, sir. Uh, Bishop, again.
Again, we're just glad to be the host, and we certainly thank and praise God for all of the laity. Uh, we just anything that we could do for you to make your stay any better. Let us know. God bless you. Lay benediction. May God bless us with the true spirit of Christianity, that we may live together, not as man over man, but as layperson working with God. Amen. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. If someone finds a wedding band that you know does not fit your hand. 